Hello friends. It's been a while since I've popped on here on YouTube and so happy to see everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, today we'll take a look at um, fear and compulsion. In our case, what I like to look at so closely and what you may be here to study is watching the impulse to eat or think about food and eating or think about weight loss or imagine your plan for a diet and just see the fear that appears and often in our lives that tends to happen. Everybody gets afraid sometimes. Everybody gets afraid of all kinds of things in life, but that our thinking crosses our experience thoughts about something and the interpretation is that is dangerous that's a threat i need to be afraid of that and even looking at often sometimes strategies to say you know i'm, I'm just going to work on not being afraid anymore because i get so worked up and so anxious um, and that drives me into eating kind of grounding myself with food and eating that um, i'm going to work on not being so nervous about my own fear. I'm just not, I'm going to work on not being so nervous. So this is an interesting idea to just be with today. And it doesn't, it, it, it and maybe we are working on our, our fear, but watching how that movement of a plan or a strategy leans into the future. You know, we're looking at what's going to happen from now on or next to keep ourselves sane and normal. So uh, many questions have come up over time about working with anxiety, working with fear. And, you know, there's a lot of different things and activities and behaviors and doing that goes on, not just eating, um, when it comes to anxiety, nervousness, um, having nerves, feeling shaky, uh, self-criticism, self-condemnation, seeing a future that isn't going to work well. I notice that I get a little stirred up when I'm going to go out on stage and talk, you know, like, and I remember thinking, I've done this a bunch of times. I shouldn't be afraid anymore. I shouldn't be afraid of this anymore. Uh, what if I didn't label it fear? But let's take a look, you know, just to see what if I, what if I, it's okay that it's there. What if I don't have to get rid of it? I notice often the, um, the conduct, the experience, the interaction with the people, what's going on there still works out pretty well, you know, better and better over time, even if there is sort of that, that excitement and anticipation and busyness and nervousness in the mind. Okay, so we're just watching fear and fears that appear, especially when it comes to this eating issue that is just so close to my heart because I suffered so much from binge eating and binge dieting, and just agony around food and eating and incredible violence towards the self about how eating was running. Okay, so there's the food, a little typical experience. Like there's the food, I walk into an event, there's all the people and there's all that food. Or I come home to my empty house and there's that empty, empty space and I start to feel like I wanna eat food. And I told myself I wasn't going to do it. Ah, uh, okay. There's this story that um, Byron Katie tells in Loving What Is. So, so many of the people that that would follow this or see this have read the book Loving What Is. And um, there's a story that Byron Katie talks about. It's also a very, very old Zen story, um, very similar. So about a snake and a rope. So um, I want to take a look because in the story that Byron Katie is telling, in the Zen story, um, it's a Buddhist story. A Buddhist monk is traveling home on a narrow country path one evening. So I'm looking at the written words here. It was becoming quite dark quickly. Suddenly the monk spied something in his path ahead and unable to make it out, he proceeded with caution. You know, uh-oh, uh-oh, you know what that's like. There's a piece of chocolate cake, you know. Uh-oh, I've got a thought in my mind about eating. Oh, I, I'm anxious. I'm even just experiencing anxiety. The thing, 
that the monk saw on the path was long, thin, slightly coiled. Snake, thought the monk, and stopped dead in his tracks. Yet, this was his only path to get home before it was completely dark, and the monk experienced a moment of fear and panic. I must get home soon, before dark. But the snake is perhaps poisonous. I'm stuck, he bemoaned to himself. Having some fire-making tools, the monk quickly fashioned a crude torch and proceeded carefully forward. And just as suddenly, snake <gasps> became rope. Some previous traveler had obviously dropped a portion of rope on the trail. And the monk could have easily passed by it without fear. And with this realization, how quickly fear became humor and panic to peace. How he had deceived himself with illusion and the monk experienced a sense of enlightenment. Often what we'll do though is say, oh my God, I shouldn't have seen it the way I saw it. I need to stop seeing it this way. But let's say that in the shadows, as you're looking, as you enter that party and a gigantic buffet is occurring, as you experience life doing what it does and the people, rejection and betrayal and abandonment and love and tenderness and the ups and downs of life and the hurricanes and the tornadoes and then the sunny days and the peaceful days. Let's say that in the shadows, you think you see a rope and as you get close and as you bring out the torch and as you look with your flashlight or you are a monk using your fire fire making tools you get close and you see it's actually a snake don't you love how the, the story never goes that way but isn't it great that we have some discernment and that the mind taking in what seems to be outside of us in the world out here perhaps illusion, and that the way the mind is built is set up for danger and caution and good that it does that. Because if we think it's a rope and it's actually a snake and we lean in long ago when I had only my little two-year-old toddler, and he was in the sun porch in the back he was playing out there by himself for just a little bit. I was right close by, right next door, right through a little doorway. And um, little finger goes out, little finger goes out because there was a bee, bee down on the ground. For those of you who don't know, bees uh, can tend to get drunk and um, fall into kind of a sleep state when they can't get out and back to their hive. And it was stuck in this sunroom that was completely encased in glass, unable to get back out the door when it would have been opened. And so it had been there for who knows how long. And the little toddler finger comes up and the bee, you know, startled and stung. And my little baby child, you know, came and this finger was just swelling up and the crying and the screaming, such a shock. You know, there's the world and uh, it'd be like that. I mean, that's possible. I don't know what it is. Let me look. Let me get in there and look at it. <laughs> um, so it's okay that the mind is set up like that. Just letting the letting it be okay that anxiety appears or fear or caution or a tendency to that. It is thought, it's mind doing its job, built to be cautious and careful, you know? So yes, this eating thing, this eating thing has come and we hear all these warning signs. Oh my God, watch out about eating this. These things can cause cancer. This can cause, drug food. this is, creates a um, uh, binge eating. This is um, industrial food, you know, made for you to want it and eat it and like it. And, 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 and it's a great thing to do, says the mind, even before any of that. It's a great thing to do if you feel really, really anxious. Let's seek pleasure. What's going on? What can bring us back to pleasure? Anxious, anxious, anxious. You know, what, how can I um, kind of ground myself um, in and eating and all the other things that human beings find pleasurable and seek for. 
drugs, alcohol, buying stuff, you know, cleaning. I was doing the work with somebody recently on a cleaning, like compulsive cleaning, like, no, it's not necessary to clean and empty the garbage. But she was, found herself daily wanting everything to be right in place. Who knows? Just watching, watching the urge, the reactivity, reactivity, and reactivity to our reactivity. There's a place in this inquiry process. I mean, it is really what question four is all about. Who would you be without your story? Who are you without your story? If there is no right or wrong way for this to be running in the moment, for the mind to be okay with it, how it is, how it's set up, it's okay if it thought that it was a snake and it turned out to be a rope. Yay! What a relief! Amazing. It's okay if the mind imagines that it's um, a, a rope and it turned out to be a snake. Who knows what will happen next? <laughs> Who knows what will happen next? Even that, the danger zone. Who am I without my story? Even thoughts about if something is true or not true. Thought. I don't know. I don't know. Could it be safe to not know? Could it be ultimately safe to deeply and truly actually not know? Because no one does. <laughs> no one, no one knows. Who am I without my story as I look and hold it and see and trust that what ha whatever is underway, however it unfolds, is just part of the process. There's ups and downs. There's bumps and bruises. There's loving it and hating it. Mind, mental, you know, looking, how it sees it. I find there's the thing happens and then the gripping tightness of concern around it that happens next or caution. But without really believing any of my stories, knowing that every story will pass and move through, who am I if it really is all okay, that underneath I am also connected at all times to peace, that ground, that ground that we're thinking that we have to panic and rush to back to quickly, that it's okay if fear or dread or feeling doomed is present, who am I without my whole story that it will require something to get that I do to get rid of this thing or that I need someone else to get rid of it? Any of that. Who would I be without anything being required here? I just find food then is no longer necessary to eat and, and any compulsive process just can relax and die away. Who am I? Who am I? A great, mysterious question. A huge, enormous um, visit into a mystery. Even when we're talking about all these things that seem so like ridiculous as food and eating and diets and plans and weight and weight loss and <laughs> what's going on there, it's important. It could be, it has been for me, a doorway, uh, a <laughs> falling off a cliff, I suppose, <laughs> right into um, an ocean of peace, an awareness of peace. Oh, it sounds so cosmic. Um, just seeing this predicament that felt like so much of a problem, to see it and be curious and not grip so tightly against it that it's all black and white. You know, it's a rope and then it's a snake and then it's a rope and then it is a snake. And, you know, it just don't know. I don't know. And it's okay if the mind is working however it works with extra hyper caution. Heard it said to be 80% uh, 80 negative bias, brain science. <laughs> okay that it's working that way. You know, a little safer if you imagined at first that it was a snake and found out it was a rope than if you imagined first that you thought it was a rope and then found out it was a snake. 
and even you know who knows what happens from there but that can be safe doesn't mean yeah grip onto my warnings forever the mind will just do what it does and be there for you and we don't have to believe it doesn't mean we're going rushing in to something or that it's never going to we're never going to come to peace if we stop believing whatever the mind is telling us um, peace is already present in every adrenaline situation anxious situation it always comes back down like in waves doesn't it but that peace that ground of peace like a mountain holding us being there the thread that has been here all through life the whole time being in touch with that allows compulsions to not like be such a big event such as something that we that see there's nothing to do except for that other options become available with practice it might take some practice and just some looking and being and willing 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 to welcome it all welcome it all so love the questions if you if you like to ask questions about this topic I love receiving questions because then I can direct answers clearly. Make sure you're on the mailing list for Eating Peace, workwithgrace.com. You just see, click on Eating Peace, and there'll be some place to get yourself on the mailing list or even below this video. And then I just send things out from time to time, mm -hmm. and then you'll know where to write back and send uh, questions. We'll pop on here on YouTube. So welcoming it all. Letting it be okay that the mind's doing what it's doing when it gets fearful. Nothing wrong with it. Fear appears to exist. <laughs> so, and it changes and it passes. And peace comes again. All right. Lots of love, everybody.